Adventures. My name is Mary and I'm the co-owner of Two Foot Adventures, an ultralight backpacking store along the Pacific Crest Trail. I'm really excited for today's video. We're going to be speaking with my buddy Lee over at Trailside Fitness. He's an expert at helping hikers stay injury free while backpacking and hiking long distances. Let's not delay. Let's get over and hear what Lee has to say. Hey hikers, Lee with Trailside Fitness. For those of you that don't know me, I help hikers get strong and confident so they can enjoy their journey, not endure it. I've been interviewed by the Washington Post, NREI, and I specialize in training hikers to hike long distances and have a great adventure. Today's video, we're gonna to talk to you specifically about training to reduce injury risk, so stay tuned. It's no surprise that hikers have to deal with a number of possible injury issues as they hike. And according to the halfwayanywhere.com surveys each year on the Pacific Crest Trail, Anywhere from 25 to 30% of hikers are ending their hike each year because of an injury. And most of those hikers aren't even gonna reach the halfway point. And that is just super disappointing and super depressing if you're a hiker. The good news is there are a lot of things you can do before you leave for your hike that are gonna set you up for success. Today's video, I'm gonna walk you through some really basic exercises to help you reduce your injury risk for these really common problems that hikers are facing. It makes sense that most hikers are gonna have issues with their feet, like plantar fasciitis, uh, maybe some calf pain, Achilles tightness, or shin splints. That lower part of your leg is doing a lot of work while you're out hiking. So this first set of exercises, we're gonna take a look at some really basic things you can do with minimal equipment to help make those areas nice and strong. The key is keeping the tripod in the foot. So your heel is down, the ball under your pinky toe, and then the ball under your big toe. That's your tripod. And if that thing is on the ground and nice and stable, you're gonna have nice solid foot position for any of the exercise that you're doing. And that's gonna be a key for a lot of the exercises we have coming up. The short foot exercise is gonna utilize that tripod that we just mentioned on the bottom of the foot. So with this exercise, you wanna keep your foot nice and flat on the floor, and you're gonna begin the movement by bringing the ball of your foot under your big toe. Think about contracting that and bringing it toward your heel. And at the same time, you're gonna lift up on your arch. This may be a little tricky to get at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's a really efficient exercise at building and strengthening the muscles of the arch. This over time is gonna have a pretty big impact on how strong your foot is. Often as hikers, our foot gets a little bit tired with uh, so many miles. And as that happens, that foot starts to over flatten more and more and more. So at the end of the day, you may have more foot pain than you did at the beginning of the day when that foot is a little bit more stable and it's able to handle the weight a little bit better. This exercise can help you maintain that arch longer throughout the day. This exercise is a great way to test and see if you're able to maintain that tripod in your foot. For this one, you just anchor a resistance band off on something stable, and then you're gonna place the band under the ball of the big toe. From this position, you're just gonna work on your balance while not letting that band slip out from underneath your foot. Once that gets easy, you can add a little bit of a leg swing to it and see if that makes it a little bit more challenging. And then finally, you'll, in the same position, perform a reverse lunge and really focusing on keeping that foot down. You might be surprised how difficult this one gets. The big toe flexion, this one is pretty cool. You just tie a band around your big toe and then you're gonna curl your big toe and then you're gonna point your foot down and then just reverse that. So now you're gonna bring the toe back, let the big toe relax and then crunch the big toe, point the foot, repeat and keep going. This one is gonna be great at strengthening the muscle underneath the big toe and this has a lot of responsibility when it comes to maintaining the arch of your foot. One last great exercise for the soleus is the wall sit heel raise. So for this one, I'm looking for a specific angle and it's right around 60 degrees at my knees. Once you get your knees about 60 degrees with your hips resting up against the wall, you're simply gonna raise your heels up. So if this one gets a little challenging and it does really separate out that soleus muscle specifically, you'll definitely feel this one. This is an excellent exercise to target the soleus muscle specifically. One super simple one is a three-way calf raise. So the first position, you're gonna point your toes straight ahead, grab onto some dumbbells or some sort of weight for a little extra resistance. I like to do 15, kind of a regular speed, and then 10 fast, immediately following. Next position, I'm gonna move my feet outward. Same thing, 15 followed by 10 fast. And then the last position is toes pointed inward. Again, the 15 and 10. 
This is an awesome way to get a nice little calf workout in and it's great for that Achilles as well. Moving on up, we're gonna take a look at some exercises for the knee. Now, what you're gonna want for good knee strength here is buns of steel. So we got a lot of butt exercises that are coming up. And the reason that's important is because the butt muscles actually help to control the rotation of your long leg bone. And that has a direct impact on how much uh, stress and strain goes through your knee. So we're gonna dive in and take a look. A great option to get the hips nice and strong is using these resistance bands. And depending on where you place the band, it's gonna increase or decrease the amount of tension that you're gonna feel during the exercise. So for beginners, I'd like to start above the knee for kind of the intermediate exerciser, probably down toward the ankles. And then for more, the more advanced, we're gonna put it around the feet. And the lower you go, the more challenging it's gonna be. So just find the right uh, placement for you before you start this hip series. First up, we have the side steps. So this one, you're gonna place that band at the appropriate level. You're gonna push your hips back like you are in a deadlift position. And then from here, keeping your feet pointed straight ahead, just sidestep down about 20 feet and then come on back the way you came. Remembering to fight the resistance of the band as you go. Next up, we have a banded out and back. So you're gonna swing your leg out to the side and then bring it back diagonally, landing about 45 degrees behind you before you bring the other leg in to match. So then you're just gonna repeat the same on the other leg, taking this one all the way down and then turn around before you come on back. So this one you're gonna feel in both legs, the one that's working plus the one that's uh, stationary. Finally with the band, we have a lunge matrix variation. So this one just tapping out to the side, 45 degrees behind and then straight back and then hitting that 45 degrees again and then back out to the side. This is a great way uh, to fill some space in between some larger exercises if you're taking kind of a little rest break, uh, but it's a great one to get the glutes fully active in the movement. Clamshells, we've got a series of four that we're gonna go through. The first one is the standard clamshell. So with this, you're merely gonna uh, lay on your side, making sure that your knees and feet are stacked up. From here, you're gonna work to open up your top leg like a clamshell. Uh, what you wanna avoid is letting your hips rock way back behind you. This is not a whole body movement exercise. This literally is just isolating the muscles on the side of the hip. So control that movement of the top leg. Higher is not better. It's all about limiting that uh, hip swaying backward. The second variation often feels a little bit easier. And for this one, we're gonna keep our knees together and just raise the foot upward. This one generally goes pretty smooth. Uh, it'll get a little more challenging as we get into the third and fourth though. Looking at the third option now, we've uh, put our fist between our knees to, to set the space that we want, which is 46 inches. You're gonna keep that knee still and raise that foot up just like you did in the second clamshell variation. This one gets a little challenging because as those hip muscles get tired, your knee is gonna to wanna to drift forward, so really limit that uh, movement there. And finally, our fourth position, this one, you're gonna swing your leg so that it's in line with your body all the way up and down. And you're gonna still rotate that leg up and down just as you did in the second and third uh, variation of the clamshell. Uh, the trick here again is keeping that knee in line with your body and not letting that knee drift forward or uh, losing that four to six inch height between your knees that you created. Next up is weighted bridge. This one, any kind of weight on the front of your hips is fine. This kettlebell happens to be 53 pounds and feels like I could definitely go higher with this one. So for this, you're just gonna place the weight right in front of your hips, keeping your abs nice and braced. You're gonna squeeze your butt and raise your hips up off the floor. This one is great for building hip strength and core strength. This is the star lunge. You'll note on the floor, I've got some nice tape to make it easy for me. You could literally use the lines in a tile floor. You could put pennies out. You could use blue painter's tape, just something to give you some reference to shoot for. The depth and the distance that you step and drop into in the lunge here are irrelevant. Deeper may be a little bit better, but really the idea is just to get you moving in these different planes of motion instead of straight ahead or back behind. So for this one, I typically do three to five times per leg, and then I'll switch to the other leg and repeat. This exercise is a three-way step down. This is a great exercise for hikers that are having any sort of discomfort walking downhill or downstairs. So we've got three different positions. The first one is the forward step down. For this one, the working leg is the one on the step. So for the foot that's gonna be off the step, you wanna pull the toes up so that your heel is hitting the ground first. For the working leg, you wanna use your hips to start the movement. So you're gonna reach back with your butt a little bit and drop down until your heel hits the floor and then you're gonna come back up to the start position. 
For the lateral step down or the side step down, it's gonna be the same movement. You're gonna start with your hips first, drop down until that foot hits the floor. You're gonna come back up to the start position. Here, I also like to keep my toes up instead of toes down, which means I get a little bit more movement out of my uh, lowering piece, which is what I'm looking for. And the third and final position is the back step down. So this one, again, I'm pulling my toes up so my foot is flat as it touches the ground. This makes sure that I get as much motion out of my working leg, my left leg in this case, as I possibly can. These exercises are by no means an exhaustive list and just know that you've got tons of options out there. Goblet squats are a great addition. Single leg deadlifts are fantastic. Um, you've got also great exercises like the lunges and lunge variations. If you follow me at all, you know I'm kind of in love with lunges. Um, so make sure and sneak those in. You've got front step up, side step ups. Any of those exercises that are really gonna target a lot of the muscles of the lower legs at the same time, those are the ones you wanna focus on. As always, if you guys have any questions, make sure and reach out and I'll make sure and get you covered. Happy trails. We hope you enjoyed Lee's video as much as we did and all of his tips on how to have a successful through hike. Don't forget to check out his website and all the services that he offers. We'll link it to it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like this video. We'll be bringing you more great content as the season progresses. You can find us 24 hours a day on our website, twofootadventures.com. We're also on Instagram at Two Foot Adventures and Facebook at Two Foot Adventures. We hope you have a great hike, and until next time, be safe out there. Bye.